Greetings, folks, and welcome to The Codex Show, episode number two for spring of 2019. Studio audience, let's get a hand for The Codex Show. We are coming to you live in cold February of 2019. This has been the most brutal winter ever, but that's okay. Um, we're surviving and we're looking forward to the spring. Those of you who are watching on YouTube, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Our premise for the Entrepreneurship Club meeting is to bring entrepreneurs to the students. Um, our, our premise is that, listen, you know, you hear about entrepreneurship, you read about it, but can you actually really do it? The answer is yes. And by bringing entrepreneurship to the students, that's just one way that we do so here in the beautiful campus of the College of DuPage, located here in Glen Ellen, Illinois, um, on the beautiful 50 to 60 something acres. Right, Chris? 273. 273 acres of land here in beautiful Glen Ellen, Illinois. I always mess that up. Um, I see I'm a small acre kind of guy, so I don't think big. But I'm starting to think big more and more and more and more. So I'm so excited. What other notes do I have here? Got to talk about um, a lot of events coming up here for the spring of 2019. The Maker Market is a big one coming up on April 10th of this semester. Um, definitely, you're, you're welcome. All of you guys here are welcome also to purchase from our students, to at least support our students at the very least. And, um, and yeah, my name is Peter James. I am a faculty here on campus, business marketing and, and management discipline. And I'm so excited for you guys all to be here. And I'm so excited for our guests to be here. So without further ado, let's jump into our guest. Chantel. Hello. My name is Peter. How are you? Nice to meet you. Good. We have never met before. Nope. I'm so excited to meet you. I've been hearing some great stuff. People rave about you. OK. But, um, <laughs> but I want to welcome you to the College of DuPage. But you're not a stranger to the College of DuPage. No. So share that experience with us, if you don't mind, a little bit. Um, how long ago did you attend? So I graduated in 2013. Nice. So, nice. Um, what was your major and stuff like that? What did you uh, chemistry, okay. so science. So it's not too long ago, actually, 2013. Nope. No. Chemistry and science, ooh, yeah. like doctor stuff. Or scientist stuff. Scientist stuff, I like <laughs> that I like that kind of stuff. So has the campus changed since you've been here? Yes, it was horrible. <laughs> 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 um, because um, like I lived through destruction, like mm -hmm. the construction, it was crazy. Like this hallway, I remember we had to walk down single file and it yeah. was like boarded up and construction and sides, it was bad. Like the M building is like across the street, right? I don't oh think God. we have an M building anymore. It's gone. Thank <laughs> God. Thank God. <laughs> I didn't know where it was my first day. I walked all of the, this whole part. And I was like, oh, you have to go across the street. And I was like 45 minutes late for class. Yeah. It was bad. But now there's signs. You know, you can get to class easy. Yeah. So yeah. I think you guys got it great. They do have. They don't know how good they have it. Yeah, it was bad. Technology. Parking was oh, oh, parking was bad. Did you know they have a media lab that they could actually videotape themselves what? and do podcasts and stuff like that over here for free? Wow, we didn't yeah, have they that. Don't, they don't know that either. <laughs> they don't use it too much as much as they need to as well. So welcome back to the campus. I'm so excited. I'm, um, we're so excited. We want to hear a little bit about your journey. Um, so after you were here in 2013, um, where did you head to after that? If you mind sharing. Um, so I headed to NIU. Okay, good, good. So I just, and I was working in downtown Chicago at a salon and I was going to school in DeKalb and wow. I lived in like Naperville. So it was, it was, I was just stretched between three different places. So I decided to mm -hmm. just start doing hair in DeKalb and I met some great people, some great faculty, some good students. Um, and that was just a journey in itself. So I'm. Um, hair, chemistry, how did that all uh, begin with that as well? Was that a passion of yours maybe from, the, from before? Um, I've always played with hair chemicals, hair products, and I always wanted to make my own, so I decided to study chemistry so that I can make my own and really know what the chemicals and molecules are that mix together to form different mm -hmm. um, things. Very awesome. So did you start your own salon out there in DeKalb or did you No, it was already it? one out nice. there, so. So you worked, you worked in there as like an independent contractor. Absolutely. So you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of fascinated because I have um, a wife and three daughters. Me so too. all girls. But I have a husband and three daughters. Good for you. <laughs> it's much better. Um, well, no. <laughs> No, never mind. Okay. I went through all that whole last five seconds of my life. Okay, um, <laughs> but uh, so with three girls, you know um, the hair and everything like that too. And so I'm always I've taken my daughters to the salons, 
and I'm fascinated because I think the salons are like independent contractors, kind of, but then they kind of pay for the booth. So paint that picture for me just a little bit, and maybe even for our audience who may not understand the entire structure and what it's about. Do you mind sharing? Okay. okay so it's, it's kind of a few different ways. You have um, some salons where it's kind of community mm -hmm. and in the sense that um, you get paid a commission, whatever clients come into the salon, it belongs to the business and not necessarily that particular stylist, but that doesn't mean you can't build up and build those relationships sure. and establish those networks in case you ever do want to leave and build your, have your own place. Right, right. Um, and then there's some salons where they allow you to pay for a space, to rent a space out for um, every week or two weeks or a month, however, um, they have it. And so uh, the one you were operating in, which way, which oper which way did that operate? Um, when? I, uh, when you were in DeKalb. In DeKalb, it was an independent contractor. Awesome, awesome. So that's good. So you were building relationships with uh, clients in order to build up your clientele, build up your base for that yes. matter as well. Um, and of course, did you have repeat customers, a lot of repeat customers. And how did you go about building up your clientele? Was there, did you go on advertisements, social media, what? Um, so starting in downtown Chicago, I'm starting as an assistant and an apprentice. Um, it's great, it's fascinating because it's fast paced. Um, the clients um, are more so maybe in business or banking, Congress, law, wow. um, just working in the downtown area. They work there. They can easily come to the salon. We do 45 minute blowouts, hour, maybe 90 minute services quickly. Um, and then to go to DeKalb where it is now is the college town. Mm. and they are going to school so they're students so they don't necessarily have the careers that will maybe sustain you as an entrepreneur. Sure. So you also have to look at the demographics, yeah. what kind of um, what kind of money does the town bring in sure. and will your business survive or thrive in the next 5 to 10, 15, 30 years you will be maybe in that location. Sure, sure. So you, uh, you graduated from d NIU Correct? No, I didn't finish. So you never finished? Okay, no, no, no problem at all. So you stayed out, how long did you stay out in, uh, in the DeKalb area? Two years. Two years. And I've been out there, and I, I'm not, I can't say but I've I been But I commuted. Out. I was still commuting. From Naperville? Yeah. Okay, good for you. I've been out there, a little austere, a little mm -hmm. uh, rural as well. Um, so did you, you stayed out there for two years, then what was the next move? Um, I decided it wasn't working. I wasn't making enough money. Um, school was really hard, so if you don't have kids or a spouse, <laughs> keep going and do all you can because once you have all of that, you don't have as much time yeah. to study. And it's like, I don't even remember stuff that I remember when I was your age in college. Like now, I'm like, I was like, oh my God, they want to memorize all of these molecules and take this test and a final and like the baby's crying. Like <laughs> it was bad and I'm like, it was just harder. Right, so right. that's why I wasn't able to finish, but I'm still going to create that great product that's going to, you know, take me there and then I can go back to school or, you know, something different. I'll have more time sure, to sure. focus on it. So, so you, um, you, you stopped there. Did you go to a salon back in Naperville? Did you go I back did. downtown? I went to a salon in Naperville. How did that work out? How was that compared to downtown? It was commission. Uh -huh. So it was easier because DeKalb really drained me all because I was an independent contractor. That means I pray for all of my products, yeah. my supplies, my online booking site. Everything was on me except, you know, the lights and the gas and the water. Um, so in Naperville, it was a load off. I used the salon products. I get paid a commission from doing the services for the clients. And, and for those who are kind of not familiar with the whole ind independent contractor, which is kind of like being an entrepreneur, um, it's almost like, um, let's see, selling your services. You're like, you're like on eBay, you're selling stuff on eBay, right? And you have to pay eBay a part of your commission. That's kind of like being an, an independent contractor, except now this t in this case, you have to pay like a little bit of money towards the owner of the establishment. Um, right from from that perspective, if you're part of a salon, which was the independent. So if you're an independent contractor, yes, and you in a salon, you have a booth, yes, and you have to pay the salon owner a percentage, um, or, or a set amount, yes. Very similar, a rate. Uh, like a, or a rate. Very similar you have to do with eBay. eBay was a percentage, more or less. Did yes. I explain that right, or did, I, did that confuse yeah. you more? No, they do. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> hey folks, I don't want to ask all the questions, of course, so if you guys have questions as it relates to being in a salon, uh, in a salon being a, an independent contractor or anything as we continue down this, her road, her journey, let us know. You have a question in the back, sir. Uh, it's not really like about salons, but like, uh, I listen to a lot of entrepreneurship podcasts, and I've heard a lot of people talk about 
but like the one thing that you don't really see from most entrepreneurs is how, as a student in college, how to balance college yeah. and like being an entrepreneur. So like, uh, like do you have any tips for me? Like, or any, like I mean, everyone, like how to balance both, and that makes my question make sense. So now we were, we're jumping forward because actually towards the end of it, I always ask about what advice would you give for students. But I want to, he's asking, you know, as, during your experience as a mom, as um, a business owner, how, do you, how can you be successful doing that and, and still go to classes? I would say you have to manage your time wisely. You really have to wake up or before you go to bed every day and say, I am doing this, this, and this, and like follow through with it. So that um, when you look at the end of the week and you can actually look at that calendar and track that you were actually maximizing your time and you were doing what you needed to do and you were studying instead of scrolling, so. Like scrolling? Scrolling the internet, because it's <laughs> easy. You're just right. on Instagram and it's been a yeah. while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You can, you can get carried away with that all night. Right? All night, and then no studying time, and then yeah. it's... Feel free to ask more questions, folks, of course, does anybody have. I have one now. So after uh, in Naperville, where you were, you were in Naperville, tell us about, I know you wrote a book as well, and I want you to tell us about the journey after um, you left NIU, you started working in a salon. Did you go back downtown or just stayed out here in Naperville? Or tell, tell us a little bit about that. Um, uh, that was a loaded question. So that just, was a loaded question. So wherever you, want, wherever you want to go with that. Yeah, right. Um, so in Naperville, actually, that's when I started writing my book. Um, I began a journey January 2016, and I finished well, I finished like writing all that I could um, September 2016. So it was like nine months of writing and then I began the editing process right. and pumping out, you know, the hard stuff. Um, and so my book launch was February 12, 2017. Mm -hmm. um, and during that time I was in Naperville and it was easy. So it was good that it was easy. I was on commission. I didn't have to buy products. I didn't have to worry, oh, I'm out of color and Mrs. Brown is coming and she does not want any other color but brown so <laughs> <laughs> and I can depend on the salon to carry those burdens sure. so when you are an entrepreneur it's all those extra burdens and stress yeah. and worry that maybe like magazines and newspapers don't necessarily tell you or show you that you get to that you can see but it's you remembering and being um, accountable and responsible that even if you do a service wrong or you're something that's a uh, defected in your product you are still 100% responsible. Sure. Not your assistant, you know, not the person that took the order over the phone, the customer, the client were always gonna blame you and they're probably gonna go on the internet <laughs> and write a review about you. And you know, with the social media nowadays, mm -hmm. it's very important to, um, to respect the customer service game and really learn customer service and value it, um, and value your customer and your client. Um, because like social media can take you out. It could like take you down in like an hour, 24 hours and like about your business and yeah. then you have to rebuild and start all over again. So um, I just wanted to say that. No, no, I appreciate you saying that actually because uh, again as a, as a father of daughters, I always thought, I always had trouble or ch I still have challenges finding great um, hair salon um, folks, um, people to do here or anything like that for my daughters, and I feel like we were all, we've always been jumping. L let's stay on that. The customer service professionalism, I see it, the myriad of it. What is it like in the industry from your perspective? Um, so for me, again, starting <laughs> out in downtown Chicago, I think I was just lucky. I went to the top beauty school, Pivot Point International, so I got to mix in with a lot of different nationalities and ethnicities. And um, I went to hair shows, so we saw a whole nother world and they propelled us to go into the, the top salons and you know, to be the, they want you to be ahead at the top, you know, sure. a, in your career, in your industry. And so when I left downtown and I go to DeKalb and I go to Naperville mm -hmm. and I've been, you know, on the west side of Chicago and I've seen salons on the south side of Chicago, nothing could mirror the downtown image. Mm. So the good part was I got the training in the top realm, but then I got to go out and build my business in DeKalb, which nothing is wrong with DeKalb, but the salons didn't mirror the downtown essence or atmosphere. Sure. Um, and so I was always hard and critiqued different things because it just wouldn't stand up um, downtown. That would make me want to go back downtown. Yeah. 
<laughs> is that what you did? Well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, am I jumping ahead? Yeah, you're okay, jumping okay. ahead. So, so, so still, let's stay on the book a little bit. So, okay, yeah, I'm sorry. Yes. So um, my book is called Decisions, and it is a journey of faith through a domestic violence relationship. So although it's a fictional story, it's based on real life experiences. Um, so from the start writing of Decisions, I became a speaker, and now I'm an advocate for domestic violence. Mm -hmm. And um, I also work with Family Shelter Service. It's uh, a women's shelter here in um, DuPage. Yeah. I'm not sure. It's right, well, the office is right down on Wheaton. Okay. How, how, do you Wheaton. Feel, how do you feel like, um, so you, you almost kind of did a little big pivot right there, yeah. jumping into that. But is there a link between the two? Do you think that in, any part of your salon experience has helped you as a speaker, as even writing the book from that matter? Um, oh, absolutely. So I use all of my clients. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I wrote an excerpt and I had it on the uh, iPad and I was like, hey, yeah, girl, uh huh, that look good, uh huh, uh, read this. And uh, if you're under the dryer, take a look at this. And I would just ask random people um, everywhere. Wow. Um, I even took a job at Sally's at the time because I needed uh, some type of steady income coming in. Sure. I have three children, I have a husband, we had a dog, I think. Uh, um, so I still have to pay real life yeah, bills. Yeah. I'm living a, trying to live a dream of, you know, reaching my dreams and being a celebrity stylist and yeah. making a lot of money, but I still have to maintain real life. Like yeah. the kids still have to eat every day. Yeah. They need a snack. They need lunch. Um, they have to get their girls. They need the hair comb. They need accessories. They need attention and pampering, lots of hugs. Sure, sure, so sure. if you have to do all of that every day and still go out and be this great, strong, knowledgeable, yeah. accountable, responsible yeah. Um, entrepreneur. Yeah, thank, thank you for saying that because I really, um, that's real world for the entrepreneurship journey. You have your goal, you have your vision, but sometimes you might have to do something like work at a Sally's in order to continue that vision, continue that path while taking care of your family. I think that's good for students or even the audience to be able to hear because that's real, real world. We always see the, the Shark Tank stories about how yep. they get on there and they do that, mm -hmm. but you've kind of painted the picture Yeah, because Shark Tank is like, man, you are, you like, oh, I want to, but wait, I have to have that many, I have to sell, sell that many products? Right, right. Oh, I'm never going to get on Shark sure, Tank. Sure, so yeah. it's kind of almost unreal, Absolutely. you know? Yes, sir. Uh, when did you start um, writing? Has you, like, have you always been interested in writing or was it, was it just something that you liked? I've always been interested in writing. Um, I just thought I was going to write when I was old and like retired and just <laughs> watching the grandkids and I'm just going to write a lot of books. And it just kind of just happened really fast. Um, oh, and so at Sally's, I would give the excerpt to the people. <laughs> and that was a good mix because it was totally different yeah, people yeah. just coming in Sally's. And um, and the, just the review from the, um, it was maybe four paragraphs, but it was really intense. And they were like, oh, my God. So, and that was it. Very awesome. You were really hustling the book. I, I like was that. hustling the book. <laughs> I like that. That's, that's true entrepreneurship right there as well. Any more questions from the audience? You yeah. guys kind of quiet. Yes, ma'am. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so I am a survivor of domestic violence and my husband always wanted me to share my story with other people and I was really embarrassed and ashamed and I'm like, no, I don't want to do it. And I just never did it. And one, that year I was just like, I'm ready, I can do something, I'm going to volunteer. So I volunteer at the shelter and they asked me to be on the speakers bureau. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, I knew they were gonna ask that, that's why I never went to volunteer. <laughs> so fast forward, it's like eight years later now, um, and I go and I um, join the speakers bureau at the shelter and they say, can you t talk for three to five minutes? And I was like, okay. And so that's how I started writing my book that I didn't even know was a book yet. Cause that was in January. And then March, I did my first speaking engagement for three to five minutes. And then I just wrote a book after that. Wow. You act like it was just so fast. I just wrote a it book. It was fast cause I'm thinking about it now, but it sure. was, oh my God, it was forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was forever when I was writing it, forever. Yeah, writing, writing a book is tough. And it's like, you don't see this. Like I didn't see this. I just had a laptop. I didn't like see the finished product. Sure. Oh my God, we went, we debated over the cover, over the words, the colors, everything. Like I read books, I studied it because I really needed it to work. Yeah. Um, awesome. So that's another thing, studying your craft. That's awesome. Yeah, we'll stay, we'll come back to that as well. So somebody else had a question over here. Yes, sir, right here. Um, I'm also interested <laughs> in writing. Wait, wait, I, I gotta ask this gentleman up here. He had his hand up. You already had a question. I'll come back to you though, okay, over here? Yes, sir. Uh, 
Um, <laughs> it's definitely like the movie. <laughs> um, I think finding the right group of people is um, very important. And um, having the right systems to make um, everyday, today functions easier that everybody understands sure. both sides. Um, but it's the people. That's actually a good question. I mean, before we go to Advaith, um, do you feel like you have a good a circle of advisors, mentors, people that you surround yourself with that keep your, you focused on the right path from that, for that matter? I do. Yeah. I you think do. that's important? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean. I'm, and I'm asking you that question because we've got students here who want to hear that from okay. someone who's been down the journey. So everybody knows when you get like, you want to, you're an entrepreneur or you aspiring to be an entrepreneur and you get this big idea and you're like, it's going to work. All I have to do is A, B, and C, right? And you're so excited and you're ready to just run off and pay all your money and just get this thing going. And then you like run it past um, a mentor and they're like, what? Wait, 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 start from here. And then how are you going to get here? And then when yeah. they begin to break it down and you can't even answer like two of those questions, it's like kind of you taking a look at, okay, yeah. maybe this won't actually work. Um, and the reason I'm saying this is because entrepreneurs, if you have nobody that's like covering you or that's over you that you can ask questions to, you're going to be like um, just flying all over the place. <laughs> um, Students have a tendency. To, actually, not only students. I mean, people have people a, have yeah, a have tendency, tendency to do, to do that. that. Absolutely, we do. We do. We can go from. I have a tendency to do that. I could go from here to here to here. I need people to keep me grounded a little bit. Thank you for my wife. Does that? That's why. Yeah. You, that's why you need a wife. Or a husband. <laughs> so my <laughs> husband is very. He is very safe. Like he yeah. always pulls me back because yeah. I am like, oh my god, let's go buy this salon in Florida, <laughs> and we're just gonna move. That's and he's what like, what? <laughs> no. <laughs> And, you know, he has to, like, rationalize and see the numbers. It has to make sense. Or he's like, girl, no, go to sleep. <laughs> um, so continuing on my journey, I write the book. I begin speaking. So now I go to different places and I speak um, about domestic violence, um, speak to young girls or um, anybody. I talk to anybody. Oh, young, rich, poor, it doesn't matter. Um, I've been, so I've been doing that since 2016. Awesome. And during that time, um, I went to another salon that looked like it, it mirrored downtown, but um, they lacked integrity. Mm. So that was so big to me. And I still had to stay there and kind of figure out my next move. Wow, like, I can't, like, quit. Because, <laughs> like, I can't quit. <laughs> so stay on that real quick. Can okay. you give us an example of the integrity? Or maybe don't go into detail. Okay. <laughs> but, like, because in my, one of my classes today, I was talking about integrity a little okay. bit, the pros and cons of it. And so <laughs> some of them are laughing because they remember the class today. So, yeah, give us, give us your perspective of it and that, what, and that you had to stay for a while because you couldn't just up and quit. Right. But you had to kind of, it was progression. Okay, so then after Naperville, so Naperville closed. It was sad. The salon closed. It kind of grew into a little family, but then it closed. So um, then I went to another place, right. and they lacked integrity. Um, you want me to give not a, not no, give no, a no, real not, example? Give like an indirect example. Okay, you should count your money every time you, before you walk out the door, every time you get paid. And that shouldn't, oh, wow. because I know better and I'm used to like that not being, how you can see what you make. And you know, technology is way more sure. advanced now. Um, I just knew it was wrong, but I couldn't leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, so how, how was the leaving progression? Well, when did you ultimately leave? Did you have to like set, set the wheels in motion, do some, do some other applications over here, find out where other salons were? Yes. How did that work? Yep, I just found some, I Googled places <laughs> in that area, and I found a salon in that area, and um, and a lot of the clients from that salon, they followed me, and I had got, sure. I got my own space. So I had my own space for a while. Yeah, good stuff. Advait, you had your hand up earlier. Yeah, um, I'm an aspiring writer, and I have a lot of good ideas, but sometimes they don't just, they just don't make sense. So like, um, like, I know you wrote a book, so like, how do you like manage like um, 
uh, editing like your own book because it's a bit tedious and like really boring. Like, yeah. Yes. That's yes. true. Um, it's very tedious, um, and you n you should never edit your own book because everything you wrote, you're gonna think is right. <laughs> never, ever, ever find some people that are opposite of you, total opposite. They think opposite, but they're good at editing books. Then you should go from there. Awesome. But you need at least three people yeah. to edit. Three totally different people to edit. Yes. Um, for your mentors, would, did you? essentially go to somebody that was in the field um, when you're like editing or was it more of like uh, just like you know, well you did already like test your audience basically with all your clients and whatnot but for more like big picture things um, how did you go about like essentially like finding the right mentors wait for <coughs> editing you well, asking, are you asking two different questions I think just like for mentors like in general for uh your salon work and yeah. for so mentors just in for your business okay. for, the, for life for, uh, for for whatever yeah so my mentors for the salon again from downtown I was an assistant so I started I'm the towel girl I can do shampoos you know I you start kind of there so they were from there and I just wherever they were at I would just find their salon it's like hey oh my god I need to talk to you uh, you know point me in the right direction this is what's going on sure. um, so that's what happened. When you, you know, it's so funny because I, I might have students ask me that or students ask somebody else that. Did you follow up? You asked them those questions. They gave you some advice. Did you stay with that advice? Did you follow through with them? Did you stay in connection with them? Some or? of it I followed. Yeah. Um, some of it I didn't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I had to go back and they said, well, I told you to do this. Well, um, so this is what happened. Sure, right. <laughs> what had happened was. Right. right, right, right. Um, yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Um, what about, okay, yes ma'am, you have a question over here. Um, where could we find your books? Where is it sold? Um, Amazon. 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 Yep. Or me. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, when you were writing your book, did you ever have writer's block? Or was it really easy to generate material and keep writing? Um, I think even though nine months is not a long time, I did get like writer's block maybe around like the fourth or fifth month. And I just, I just thought it was the worst thing ever. Um, I don't know how I got out of it. Um, oh, but I would go back to, so I met another one of my editors, again, with my clients. Um, I met one of the editors. I've known her because from the old salon, I would shampoo her. So I wasn't her stylist. I was just getting her tea and coffee and shampooing. And I remembered that she was an editor or a professor mm -hmm. at a college. So I reached out to her. And... Um, she was very, very hard, <laughs> just because she was a professor. And I was like, oh my God, it was just so hard um, with her. But she gave me the truth. Those professors are pain in the butt. Yeah. yeah. Um. <laughs> so I got a couple of questions and then we'll be finished off those. Thank you all so much for, uh, again, for coming out. So a personal habit that contributes to your success, maybe. Give us something that maybe these students can be like, yeah, I want to do that too. Something that you can attribute to some of the success that you've had in your life. A personal habit. Yeah, yeah, something. It could be anything. So we're writing a book. Yeah. I, in my phone, every day at 7 p.m., I would say, write your story. Mm. Um, I knew, like, Saturdays, Sundays, probably in any school day, I would never get to write at 7. Maybe at 9, if I'm lucky, and probably 10 or 11. So I did a lot of my writing, like, after 10 o'clock mm. um, to sometimes 2 or 3 in the morning. Um, but those were, like, the best parts of the book. <laughs> well, so I mean, just from what people tell me, because I only go off. I can only still go off what your review of the book would be. Sure. I can't just say this is a great book. I can, but if I don't have enough, you know, people agreeing with me, it's like not yeah. valid or it's not valuable, it, or you know, sure. has that substance. You so. Sell your book. You better I sell am. it. Say it's I the am. greatest thing out there. It is. I know, but like after they read it, they gave me a review, okay, right, right. and then it's gonna be bad. And so my last question, I don't see any more hands up, so my last question is I ask all our guests before we leave, and um, hopefully afterwards you'll be, hanging, be able to hang around a little bit to network with our students. But if you were college age again, knowing then what you know now, mm -hmm. what would you tell your younger self or what would you tell our students out here in the audience right now um, to do um, as they look forward in their life and their career? Manage your time. Manage your time. Manage your time. I mean. Procrastination. Yep. Procrastination sucks. 
<laughs> it does, right? We, it does. We're all kind of guilty of it a little bit. Yep, yep. So I think that in my life, this is like the one thing that I didn't procrastinate on. Mm. Like, I procrastinate on a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. But this one, I just, um, I set a plan. Um, I put the reminder in my phone every day, and I was just committed to finishing. And that's why I think it was written so fast and done so fast. Because, again, like he said, editing is boring. And then, like, you're working with somebody that knows what they're doing. So they're like, no, like every two words. You're like, wait, what? And then if they're breaking down, it's past tense or active or, you know, they, they really break it down. And you don't want it to just be anything because, again, you're investing in this. It's sure. your money. And then you're 100% responsible for every word written in the book. Yeah. I like what you said about putting that time in your phone to specifically. So if it's studying, if it's studying for a test or whatever, yep. carve out that time to accomplish your task every single day, every other day for that matter as well. Sounds like that worked out well for you. It did. Does it still work for you? Yeah, I need to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> because again, I mean, you can kind of fall off the wagon. So yeah. consistency is um, very important in having and running yeah. a business. Yeah. No matter Absolutely. how much money you have. Absolutely, it is. Hey, folks, let's give. Uh, we do have a question. I was going to say, let's give a hand, but we have a question from the back. The the, the dark horse in the back there has a question. Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> congratulations on your success. Thank you. And uh, so, with 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 you being an entrepreneur in multiple facets, yeah. because as an author, that's a business. Yes. As a owner of a, a beauty industry. Uh, company that's a business mm -hmm. and then with the speaker that's a business yep. so yes. how do you manage your passions and your desires because you could wake up tomorrow and say I have another book right so how do you manage that with all of the things that you are doing now and in your interests how do you manage that and kind of keep everything going at the same time with your responsibilities as a mom and as a wife um, that's loaded that's a good that's a that's a lot of questions. Um, <laughs> I say um, you definitely have to have a support team. Like my husband is awesome. He will, he's always available to like take care of the girls. Um, Cause he's again, like we're opposite. I think opposite to do the track. Like he will be the person in the back of the room, not necessarily in the front or, I mean, he's just always, um, He's always like taking care of everything that I need so that I can be successful outside of the house. Um, so you need a support team. Like, and the girls, they cheer me on all the time. <laughs> um, and um, I have some family that helps. Um, you need a support team. You cannot do it by yourself. You cannot own a business by yourself. And I think when you incorporate everyone on your team, it helps you stay grounded and humble so that you hear opinions of other people who have been outside or you know, just been doing other things and they can come back or they can say, hey, that does not look good or that doesn't sound good. Maybe that won't work. Um, it's important to um, value the opinions of everyone um, on your team and in your family. So for me, it's my support system that, that keeps me going because I couldn't do it. Yeah, I would even add to that. If you don't have a significant other, um, the family, who you're surrounding yourself with as friends, those are all important to identify those specific great people who can support you um, through, the, uh, through the good and the bad, but also can give you sound advice. Yeah. You know, you don't want somebody just to egg you on and be like, yeah, just blow it off. You want someone who can really encourage you to get accomplish those tasks that you need to accomplish as well. So yep. Kudos. Hey, folks, let's give Chantel a hand. <laughs> thank you. I want to thank you all here for uh, listening in on this next episode of The Codex Show. And for those of you who are watching in, on YouTube world, thank you for joining us for another episode. Look forward to seeing you again in a few more weeks as we have another great episode as well. 